All right, we are live. Let me do a quick audio check. Saying we are live 10 seconds ago. No, we're live now. It just needs to recognize that. All right, we are now live. Okay. Ready? I am. Okay. Where's the record button? Okay, I see the record button. Ready? Okay. I'm assuming you said yes. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 285 here, the security podcast here on the N30 Network. My name is Hayam. Tom is somewhere. Tom's Tom's right in front of me. Hi. That's what I'm doing. And I know we haven't been a while, but again, it's there's some, I don't know, what do we call it? A conflict in Ukraine? I, I don't a know what special, the right word is. Uh, special operation. It's, it's uh -huh. very special. It, it involves yeah. a, uh, a person who... Um, yeah, probably shouldn't be leading a country that has nukes. Um, quite literally, just trying to take over land like, like it's the Middle Ages. I mean, let's just go to so, war and grab stuff. It's disgusting. So, I mean, it's a lot of watch what's going on, watch your bank accounts, watch so you don't get fish. But just like not really security news. Like there is, but it's not enough. Like there's nothing really to talk to you about except. Watch out for increased chances of, of uh, phishing attempts or anything else. Basically, one country is trying to extort money from people who may have money because they no longer have a, cur a functional currency. But other than that, I mean, I don't know. My iOS device has just got a, you, you better update or else, but that's about yeah. it. I, I got a couple of those. There was um, a, a Java Spring vulnerability. Uh, Spring is... It's extremely popular uh, in Java applications. And apparently there's the Spring for Shell thing. I don't think it's going to be nearly as big as Log4j uh, as far as the, the impact there, but definitely something to keep an eye on. Definitely, you know, companies that use Java should look at patching stuff sooner rather than later. Um, but, you know, nowhere near as wide of impact as Log4j. Uh, so, yeah, it's been kind of quiet. Mm. There's there's a, there's a breaking story that we're still getting about wise cameras. Basically, they found a vulnerability. Instead of fixing it, they just said, uh, you can't use version one. If you have version one, we're not updating it. Turns out there was a reason why. Uh, Ubiquity is in trouble again, but because they're suing people that they shouldn't be suing. But again, well, this will come out the next week. Maybe. That's an interesting case. So let, let's save that for next week. If you want to discuss this, I will plug now our signal group and go on from there. Um, we have our signal group. Yeah, because again, we don't want to bore you with, with, with esoteric topics that don't really have meaning to you. So we, we move on. But our main story tonight is not really a story. It's a kind of a fun activity. So Tech Dirt, and we'll link this in the show description, uh, made a March Madness bracket. So we all know March Madness is going on. And I mean, I stopped watching after my Rutgers team bowed out in the play-in game, but that's about it. But they did the 2022 legal misunderstanding March Madness. So what they did is they took all these corporate and legalese words, put them in a bracket, and they're asking Twitter and everyone, which one is most misunderstood? And... And we, we, we were laughing because, yes, we, we thought, like, this would be perfect. Then you have the problem, like, how do we explain this? Like, we're not lawyers. So here's our first disclaimer. We're not lawyers. What we say should not be considered legal advice. Uh, talk to a lawyer. So I had a really great idea, but I couldn't find any lawyers to come on. I was going to ask Tom what something meant. And I would have my panel of three lawyers. And every time he said something wrong, we would buzz him. The, uh, Unfortunately, the I, budget would not cover three lawyers for a half an hour. Uh, the problem is, is that my wife is a lawyer, and her response to everything is, it depends. So, it's a so, good legal answer. Everything depends. Is it raining outside? 
I don't know. It depends. Depends on what? Well, what's your definition of rain? It's what's like, your definition of outside? Know. What's your I mean, definition we, we of saw... is, right? Like, I if mean... it is raining at this very moment, sure. But if your definition of is counts, like, the past minute or at this moment in time and then the time duration on that, it depends. So you get it. And that, that's the issue. We all, can all agree, though, a hot dog is, in fact, a taco. That's, that, that we agree with. 100%. Okay, so skip the sandwich, go straight to the taco. All right, so then we decided, I think we're going to look at the Elite Eight. Uh, re no, really the, the, the final four, because they're on the final four level. You can go find this. We'll put this in the show notes, and we will just spend the next few minutes discussing. But before we did that, was there any one, Tom, that, that stuck out to you, like, uh... I don't know, that made you laugh? Just yeah some like, color commentary look, looking at looking at all of these um I, I feel like the bracket itself the construction of the bracket clearly had some clear winners early on and it's just just blown up right like there's no way in hipaa versus immigration as a confusing legal topic that hipaa was not going to win HIPAA confuses everybody. Everyone's like, oh, it means my health insur or my health information is is 100% private and no one can ask me about it. No, that's not it's not what that means at all. Uh, the main aspect of HIPAA is health portability or health data portability, where you can move your records from provider to provider and legally they cannot stop you um, because they are your records. Uh, the other thing is like, you know, works made for hire versus free speech. Come on. Who's who on earth is going to vote uh, for works made for hire over free speech? And of course, free speech won that battle. Um, so yeah, but clearly there are some, some blowouts here, uh, in, in the various, various legal domains. Um, but I, I am really happy to see first amendment free speech and section two for earth 240 section 230, uh, in the final four of confusing legal domains. And talking about legal, uh, questionable topics. Rico is the other one. Now the problem is I know. I, I can't even spell Rico correctly, and um, I just know that people say it, and they don't know what... I definitely know they don't know what it means. I don't know enough to tell you what it even means. So, it may actually win based on the topic of legal misunderstandings. I, I can tell you it sounds like it's to uh, get organized... to charge organized crime with a whole bunch of little things as, like, an umbrella for a big thing, but... I'm not even using the right legal term. So so I don't know how much of it we can explain, but we can explain the other ones. Yeah, especially First Amendment, Section 230. When it comes to the internet at large and uh, you know how people uh, operate and are governed on digital platforms, yeah, we've, we've got a little bit of insight there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure we're going to be treading a little bit of old ground here, so, so bear with us. Also, join the Signal Group especially if you are a lawyer, and tell us why we're wrong. We like that. Um, I see corporate personhood, and I saw the other one, uh, Citizens United on opposite sides. Um, I saw that, and I'm like, hmm, that's a good one. Uh, I, do, I do love corporate personhood, and I have a full rant there uh, if we wanted to get into that, but uh, it's definitely a rant. I think like half of the amendments are on here. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Oh no, I didn't see the third amendment. You shouldn't quarter soldiers in your house, but I guess nobody cares about that anymore. Okay, so let's start with the first thing we noticed. Okay, so is the first amendment versus free speech. Well, so we have the first amendment versus Rico. We said we don't we don't want to talk about Rico. Let's talk about the first amendment. On the other side, we have free speech in section two thirty. And I think Tom's first issue was, what's the difference between the First Amendment and free speech? And we kind of settled it, but I think we said that, th okay, so the First Amendment is the entirety of the First Amendment, uh, the five freedoms. Uh, now you're going to put me on the spot. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, freedom of the press, all of that. And I think people are saying, it's my freedom to not wear a mask or wear a mask, or it's my freedom of religion to not wear a mask or wear a mask, or... I can say this because my religion says I can. 
And I think free speech is the carve out for exactly the free speech where people say, oh, you, uh, I can, Twitter is censoring me, but it's my freedom. And we say, no, that's not how that works. And then section 230, Tom will explain is the law based on the fact that if you're, con that you're going to be held harmless if you, if you do your best to try and content moderate without really content moderating. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, section two thirty. I, I feel like we can we can jump into this one and we can we can yeah. cover it fairly well. So this this was in the news uh, a year ago, a couple years ago, uh, because people were unhappy with how tech companies and social media platforms were censoring them. And yeah, based on the actual definition of censorship, censorship. Yeah, they their speech was being removed from these platforms, but. It wasn't an invasion of their First Amendment rights. It was not an, an infraction of their free speech. Uh, Section 230 basically says that if you are a platform provider, if you are running a platform like a social media website or a forum or a blog that has comments on it, um, then the people, the general public who put things onto your platform uh, for other users to consume, you know, like Instagram users uploading pictures or people posting tweets, um, if they do something incendiary or illegal and you make a best effort at moderation to remove the illegal or infringing content, you cannot be sued on behalf of your users. So basically, if I ran a forum and somebody posted a bomb threat or illegal imagery or uh, pirated content that somebody else owned, uh, and I did my best to remove all traces of that from the platform and make sure that my platform wasn't being used as, uh, you know, a place for people to acquire this illegal stuff, whatever it may be, um, then I can't be sued for that. I can turn over information on the people who posted it, and especially in cases of, you know, bomb threats or, or stuff like that. You know, that's what you should do. But I can't be sued just because some random person on the internet decided to be evil that day and used my platform as their vector. That's basically what it means. If you're posting untrue things on Twitter and they hit you with that fact check sticker, yeah, it, it doesn't mean that they can't do that. It, it doesn't mean that they're censoring you or infringing your rights. Uh, it also doesn't mean you can sue Twitter uh, because they have removed you. You can certainly try, you're not gonna win. You can sue Twitter, you can always sue anybody. But like, yeah. like you said, so, so my question to you is, it can is a report button good enough? Yeah, just, as long as those report reports button. go somewhere and somebody either actions it or looks at it or it goes into an automatic content moderation system. Um, the the issue with with Section Two Thirty and the thing that people bring up on on both sides of the argument, honestly, is this this definition of what is reasonable moderation, right? And I would say most large platforms today, if a bunch of, if a, a post, we'll just call it a post, it could be a video, it could be whatever people upload. Um, if a piece of user generated content gets flagged very quickly by a lot of people, usually in these systems, it's automatically removed. Um, and this, this can be good. Like if somebody posts, you know, clearly illegal imagery um, on, on a website, uh, then if a whole bunch of people hit that report button or the flag button really quickly, yeah, it's, it's just going to go away. Um, and most of the time it requires some kind of human moderator to go in and like unflag things, which is important because let's say somebody's just unpopular or they said something that people don't agree with, but it isn't against the terms of service of the platform. Well, yeah, it can be reinstated. It just requires a human to go in and, you know, resurface that content. Um, that could be considered reasonable moderation. YouTube, with their content ID system where they try to remove things, right? I hate content ID, for the record. I think it's a, a very poorly implemented system, but honestly kind of a losing battle. So they need it to be able to comply with Section 230 and to not be sued. Um, and I, yeah, it's, it's kind of a losing battle, no matter which way you look at it. Um, How does 4chan do it? Uh, they do have moderators, believe it or not. They they do have uh, moderators. On slash B. Yeah, they do. 
Now oh, things move okay. things move so fast uh, on some of these 4chan boards that you know stuff will slip through the cracks. It happens all the time. But there are things that are removed from 4chan. Now that said, the things that aren't removed from 4chan is stuff like you know hateful speech and racism and misogyny and you know the stuff you generally don't want on the internet tends to find its way there. Uh, but if you do post truly illegal things on 4chan, those get removed. Um, if you, you know, post blatant piracy, well, if the right person is looking at it at the right time, yeah, it gets removed. Um, but sometimes it's not fast. Uh, and that's, that's where this, like, reasonable effort of moderation comes from. Well, what's reasonable? Depends on your lawyers and depends on how much you pay them. I was going to say that. It's, uh, we have to define reasonable and we're not lawyers and... And the problem is, like you said, both sides want something else. And um, the thing I can remember is if you watch the, the, the TV show, The Good Fight, they did this season. So 21, uh, I think it's season five. They have, they have a little short of, of, what it, of what 230 is. And they took an actually anti-230 stance that the internet doesn't have the same moderation guidelines as newspapers and other media outlets. And and they want 230 removed for that. My personal opinion is 230 is not good enough. 230 needs to be rewritten, but it has to be written in a way that helps everybody, and that's not going to happen. So you repeal 230, bad things happen, and there's not going to be a replacement. You need a replacement that's that people look at and say, hey, this is what we actually need from platforms. Because Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all these places now are big enough where they do have some pockets to pay real moderators to do good moderation things. And as a teacher, I see cyberbullying all day, every day, and it's really hard when somebody's saying this person is harassing me, but Twitter won't take action because 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 they're not actively threatening violence they're just pretending to threaten violence like I, I think you can say i know where you live but as long as you don't say i'm going to cause harm we all know what that means but you didn't say harm so therefore it's okay yeah or a slight yeah. in the internet it's just it's just too big it's it's honestly a problem of scale uh, when people were running forums with a couple hundred users, it wasn't really a big deal. You have a couple mods and a couple, you know, trusted reporters, and that's all you needed to keep things sane. Um, but, you know, today, it, take YouTube, for example, right? Like, everybody hates Content ID. Everybody hates how YouTube treats their creators. And it's it's not a great place to to try to build a business or a brand. But if you're in YouTube's shoes, well, every single hour of every single day, 72 hours of video content are posted to the platform. It's a truly inhuman scale to try to moderate that thing and have any semblance of, uh, of profitability. It, like, sure, YouTube could hire that many content, moderation, uh, content moderators to go over every single thing posted to YouTube in a day, but if they did that, they wouldn't make enough money to stay in business. And, you know, there are arguments for and against YouTube staying in business or not being able to scale to meet those demands with the revenue they make, sure. Um, but you have to understand that, you know, people try to be clever about content moderation, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And, uh, you know, other times it works perfectly fine, but you anger a, a group of people. So that's where we saw all the Section 230 stuff happen in the past couple of years, is you're, you're just angering a subset of the population who wants to take you down because of it. So let's let's transition to free speech. Um, so it's going against free speech. And again, the topic is misunderstood legal definitions. So 230 is definitely misunderstood. It deserves its place in the final four in our case. Free speech now is the ability to say, I can say whatever I want. And that's not true. That's not true in a lot of situations. Um, specifically for me, because in my job, it's school. Schools, you cannot say whatever you want. And their job and the school's job is to keep an, uh, a safe school, which causes a lot of other problems. But free speech is the yes, in America, you can you have the freedom of speech, but you can scream it at in a public place to a public official in a public thing. But you you cannot violate 
my freedoms for your free speech. You can't go on Twitter and say, well, Twitter is censoring me, but I have free speech. No, Twitter is a private platform. They control that. And I think that's the main issue that the people who want to complain forget. It's yes, you have the freedom of speech on your house or on your on at a, let's say at a town council meeting or whatever it is, but and they can't go after you specifically for that unless you say something that that violates some legal uh thing but twitter can definitely ban you for your perception of free speech yeah the first amendment does not cover private establishments it doesn't give you the right to make other people listen to your free speech the only thing the first amendment guarantees uh is that you can call an elected official a doo-doo head and they cannot throw you in jail for it. That is effectively what that means. If you call somebody a doo-doo head on Twitter and Twitter bans you for that, that's not infringing your free speech. It's not going against your First Amendment rights. Twitter is a private company. It is a private platform. And just like if somebody threw you out of a restaurant for saying something heinous to another customer, yeah, Twitter can do the exact same thing. It's not really infringing on your rights at all. And free speech Twitter, itself, as you implied, it has limits. Twitter, Twitter could put a mis, uh, misinformation tag under you, and that would be Twitter's freedom of speech. And again, if we know anything about Citizens United, which apparently we know some of it, because it didn't get that far, um, uh, corporations are people too, and people have freedoms. So Twitter, in the capacity as a person, can say, I don't like your free speech, but because I have more money than you, we can do this. If you don't like it, you can sue Twitter. It's okay. They'll, don't worry, they'll handle it. Or you can build your own social network. You can do that too. You can build your own internet. And if you don't have enough money, that sounds like a you problem. At least in, because my freedoms are there. Um, I, I'm still going back to the free speech. So it's there is a bunch of a, a bunch of them that we'll see in the first amendment like uh, yelling fire in a movie theater you, you, it, there's a specific legal definition of that um you do have the, again like you said freedom of speech at the corner to yell and scream all you want but you can't do it in after 8 p.m when noise ordinances go out you can't harass people you can't you can't violate other people's freedoms because your freedoms are there um which always begs the question, whose freedoms is more important? Which is a different issue, but... Anything else on specifically free speech? Like, like everything with the law, right? There, there are going to be things that, um, uh, that just don't make a lot of sense uh, or, or that have fairly nebulous or um, not really hard-coded rules to them, right? There's some play in there, and that's honestly by design. Uh, you can't make uh, an airtight law. It's just that society and life too, has too many gray areas. There's, there's too much play uh, <laughs> in reality uh, for something to ever truly be hard-coded like that. So when somebody says, oh, well, I have the freedom of speech so I can make a bomb threat. No, that's, that's really not the case, uh, right? You cannot make a, a true, um, like, you cannot incite violence. You cannot make true threats with credible violence behind them. Um, you can't incite a panic by yelling fire in a crowded theater. Um, there, there are limits to free speech, and it's, you know, what generally uh, we as a society, uh, at least in the United States, have agreed. These are, these are forms of protected speech, and this is a form of unprotected speech, um, right? Like obscenities. Uh, for instance, right? If you were to, uh, like, hold up a sign with nudity on it in the middle of the street in New York, well, you probably would get told to stop by a police officer. Obscenities and obscene things are not protected speech in the United States. Uh, but well, saying we that you a... don't like a certain politician is protected free speech. There was a case recently, um, be before election time, where a person near a school had a whole bunch of signs with a four letter word and then Biden underneath it, President Biden underneath it. And the question was, can this be done? And it went back, it went back and forth twice. It was a no, then a yes. And I think it stayed as a yes because it was a person's property and, 
and you didn't have to look or something like that. But again, it's very, very difficult. But we do we don't have that much time. I want to move to the First Amendment. And Tom asked me before, what's the difference? And I think the difference, I, I think, is that the First Amendment covers the five freedoms versus free speech is specifically the one carve out. And I think the First Amendment, the one that people get get uh get bothered by is i think what they're specifically talking about are, are vaccines and mask mandates where we have this thing that you don't want to wear a mask you don't want to get vaccinated and that's your freedom however uh there is a public health emergency and how far can you can you go with a public health emergency to get that and is it in your religion and then we talk about how i don't know if too many religions who want to harm people i mean whatever religion you are i don't and none i don't think any of them say i we want to harm as many people i think it's more to preserve life and which begs the question of vaccines and everything else but first amendment everyone says oh it's my first amendment number one and like yeah there's again just like free speech there are certain carve outs that you can't do and what is your religion and how you define a religion and what is your expression and everything else and we have those problems Yeah, it's it's interesting, uh, and I, I am glad you called out the rest of the freedoms of the First Amendment. Right, like uh, freedom of the press is uh, is one of my personal favorites uh, because it allows uh, effectively what has been nicknamed the Fourth Estate. Right, we we have a a wild and free press. Uh, as much as you might uh, hate certain news outlets or certain magazines or certain newspapers, um, they do have the right to basically print what they want uh, under, of course, the constant threat of libel, where some uh, private person can sue the news organization or, or slander um, for saying things that are provably untrue or incendiary about them. Um, doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. The two big cases right now are Sarah Palin versus the New York Times in which New York Times did win, which was, again, another questionable case. Um, and then right now, the voting machines, both of those companies versus all the people who brought all the frivolous lawsuits again, challenging the election. Um, because all these news places are saying it as a definition of news. And if you follow it, you get a lot of, well, we weren't news. We were just stating entertainment value, which has a different definition. And... Um, Tucker Carlson specifically, nobody thinks that he's real news as their justification. And if you want to go on the other side, John Stewart did the same thing with The Daily Show. He kept on saying The Daily Show is is has a show before it with a whole bunch of foul mouth third graders in, in South Park, Colorado, and it's followed by puppets who do prank calls. If you really thought that was real news, I have something else coming. However... The demographic of, of of the Daily Show garnered a lot of eighteen to uh, whatever thirty six year olds who thought this was real news. So again, the definition of news now becomes something. Your freedom of what press and and how you go. Yes, you could print a whole lot of stuff as long as you don't say fact, factually incorrect information, because somebody can sue you using their freedoms to do that. Um, uh, religion's another big one. What's a religion? And I am not smart enough to debate that, but people like to use it for a lot of things. And specifically with vaccines, I'm happy that a lot of people looked at it and said, no, you, you can't claim this. I just hope that it doesn't go, doesn't spread too far for other things because there is a religious aspect. You cannot do this because of my religion, but then yeah, it begs and... the question of the constitution shouldn't separate religion, but they do. Yeah, if, if you're going to take away anything from this episode of us rambling about legal topics that we don't understand well enough and we're definitely not lawyers and this is definitely not legal advice, if you're going to take away anything, understand that law and legal proceedings and judges and courts and all of this is very fuzzy and your own interpretation of what something may or may not mean might not necessarily fit in with someone else's definition of the exact same text. Um, there are are there is play built into the system uh and at least in the u.s it's why we have um congress writing a law we have the judiciary system interpreting those words 
and trying to figure out exactly what the meaning is behind them and sometimes changing um, the intended definition by Congress to suit, uh, you know, whatever that platform or those beliefs might be in the judiciary. And then the executive branch, whose job it is to actually execute or carry out those laws. So you have this constant, like, tug of war happening between all of these parties. And yeah, it gets messy. And sometimes it doesn't work as well as it should. And other times it works out pretty great. Um, so you, you can pick any number of handfuls of cases to say whether or not something does or doesn't work. Just know that ultimately it's going to get fuzzy and it's going to get weird. And I will leave with this only, uh, because I, I've heard this many, many times from lawyers. You don't know the facts of the case. You heard what whatever news program told you, but unless you were in the courtroom, unless you were, you heard every single thing, you saw all the evidence, you're based, unless you were a juror in the courtroom, you didn't hear all the things. And we heard, we saw a bunch of live televised uh, uh, court trials over the last year. And some of the decisions in my mind were correct. Some of them were wrong, but then we had different discussions, qualified immunity uh, and other things like that. But if the, it's up to the prosecutor to prove a case, and you see that when they don't prove a case and you say, how do they not do it? How come OJ was, was innocent? I don't know. I wasn't there. I couldn't tell you. And say, but they told me if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. And, and I believe them. But you, have to, you weren't exactly there. You had to be there. And a lot of people think that the news is reporting everything. And, and yes, you need to keep an open mind. And so that's why we say you have to be there. Everything is it depends. And you should treat it that way. When something comes out, there was a reason that 12 people decided this happened. I don't want to say it's a conspiracy theory. I doubt that. I didn't think that 12 people together could have done something. Something was mistaken. And, and these people found beyond a reasonable doubt one way or the other that made their decision. Uh, with all of these cases, the Supreme Court, there are nine judge justices there. You may think that they have a bias but they all should be taking the case on its face value and interpret it in their way, but they're interpreting it for the good of the Constitution. And so you don't hear everything, but that's the problem, and you make your own decision. So you need to hear all the facts first. And uh, just a very random recommendation, since we're talking about law and legal systems. Um, if you haven't watched 12 Angry Men, highly recommend it. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, don't be turned off because it's it's black and white. It's an old movie. Uh, it is some of the best writing and some of the best acting I have ever seen. It's great. I think there's actually, I think you can watch it on YouTube for free. So uh, go check it out if you've got a spare couple hours. So, with that said, we won't dive into Rico because we can't explain it. Maybe no you can idea. do it in the signal group. Uh, if you had a point to win it all, most misunderstood. Ooh, if I had to pick one for the most misunderstood out of these four, I'm going to say First Amendment. I'm going to say First Amendment just because it is so, it's such a cornerstone of what law and politics is in America that everybody's got their own kind of idea about what it should and should not be, but they don't necessarily understand the subtext of the law. And I'm including myself in that list very much so. I was going to say in the beginning of the show, Rico, because no one, like we said, don't, doesn't know what it means. But I think it loses out. I think it loses out. Now, this is, this is on Twitter. So I think I'm going to go with you. I think Rico is going to lose out because the First Amendment is just more misunderstood. People are just not going to care about Rico laws, and they're going to say, I know what the First Amendment is when they're clearly mistaken. More people are going to say, I don't know what Rico is, so it's not misunderstood. They just don't know. Uh, yeah. On the other side, free speech versus 230. I have a feeling 230 may win on that side, but they will lose to the First Amendment. Agreed. Because, yeah, so... The First Amendment, the number one amendment, the thing we should have learned in school, the very basic of everything is the most misunderstood law, which I guess if it's number one, it should be. So I don't know. With that said, anything else? We are over, but we're done. I think that's it. 
okay everyone i don't know when we're next we need so uh, not that we want real security news but we want something that we can discuss so hopefully next week there's something else maybe we 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 clean this up and and finish it we'll see anyway we'll hope to see everyone next week bye everybody see ya